Hi, let's continue setting up our new event using our event creator. So far we've entered in the details for our event. Now we're going to move on to the description and the attendee types. We'll do that by choosing continue here to continue on in the process. Okay, give your attendees some more info. Maybe there's something that's incredibly important that you want everybody that's attending your event to understand and know. Well, this is one of the places that you would put that information. So I've prepared just a little something here that will include, this is just a very general piece of information that I'm going to include, but maybe there's something really important. You've got some formatting options here that you can make text stand out and that sort of thing. Uh, so there's a lot of options here in order to make sure that people see what you want them to see. So this is where you give them some more information about your event. So once we have that like we want it, we'll choose continue here. I want to toggle over really quickly here to the updated preview so you can see where that text will actually be. You'll notice right under the title here, the message that I included there shows up now. So you can see that whenever people come to register, this is something that's going to stand out to them that they'll see. So you can put anything that you want to there to make it clear to them that, hey, this is important information for you to know. So let's toggle back over to our help text here and let's take a look at our next step here. Now this is where we begin to customize the look of our page. We can add an event header for our event page. We can add a mobile header for those on mobile devices, which will probably be over 50% of the people registering for your event will be on a mobile device. So it's important to have something that, that looks good for, for the people registering there. And also you can add an email header. If you plan to send out emails through the Brushfire platform, you'll want to have an email header. And you'll notice for all of these here, the design specifications are, are listed there for you so that you'll know exactly how to create that header. So let's choose our event header. I've got something already prepared here. So we're going to select that and choose continue. Now let's take a look at the preview again. You'll notice things are changing here. So now that I've loaded the header in, we have a nice new header for our event page. So we can periodically check that as we go on through the process. Now let's choose our verbiage. Do we want to say get tickets or register? Well, this is a conference with different registration types. So we're going to say register, but you could just as easily do get tickets. It's just whatever you think fits best for your event. There's nothing that's really going to change other than the verbiage here so just select which one works best for you so once I have that I'm just going to hit continue and we are going to choose assigned seating or general admission well for us today it's going to be general admission but were I to select assigned seating I would be able to upload a seating map if I had that and configure other options but for today we're just going to select general admission and continue now this is where we select the attendee types Maybe you have different levels of registration that you want to provide. Let's say you have an early bird registration rate. This is where you would input that information. And let's say it's going to be $15. We have the option to input a capacity there if we wanted to cap that out. We're just gonna leave that blank for now. And then let's also just have another one, just general admission and we're going to select that one for $20. And again, we can add a capacity there. So we can configure this any way that we want. There's some additional options on your event platform within Brushfire that will help you configure these a little bit more. But for now, let's just leave it basic there. All right, next we're going to hit continue and then we select our fees. So the fees that are attached to your Brushfire account, you have the option to pass those on. You can choose to charge no fees for the people registering for your event. This really means that all the fees associated with the registrations on Brushfire, you will be paying. The, the customer themselves will not be covering those uh, as whenever you select the option for pass on Brushfire fees, or you can do a custom fee. Let's say your Brushfire fee is $1.50 per ticket. Maybe you wanna charge um, a $2.50 fee to cover your Brushfire fee and additional expenses or you can just absorb that fee yourself. And I think that's the option that we're going to select today. So I'm going to select no fees and choose continue. 
All right, now we have to decide how we want to process the payments. We can connect an existing payment gateway or connect a new payment gateway. Well, since this is our first time, we're going to be connecting a new payment gateway. So I'll hit continue there when I'm ready. But if you had an existing payment gateway, this is where you would select that. But for now, let's hit continue. And we have an option to use Square, which we love to work with Square on the Brushfire platform. We can connect to Stripe or we can connect later. And that's the option option we're going to choose today because we can all always come back and connect that later. But it's important to know that we have to configure this before we publish our event for the public to sign up. So we'll do that here later. So for now, let's choose connect later and choose continue. The next step that we'll take in the next video, as you can see here, is we'll select the questions that we want to ask for our event. So I'll see you in the next video.